Do you ever have emotions that you can't explain? Have you ever lost control of these emotions? Do these emotions have a name? These were the first three questions that Dr. Mallison asked of Joseph Kinkirk just six hours after his arrest, to which Kinkirk answered, yes, yes, and Henry. This course of exchange laid the foundation for a defense that failed, not only because of the meticulously collected physical evidence, um, but, but also because of the currently accepted opinion in modern psychology, multiple personality syndrome does not exist. It was a psychological fad, a therapist-induced disorder perpetuated by an unending barrage of uh, TV talk shows and novels and, and, and ill-conceived Hollywood movies. Joseph Kinkirk has been under observation at various psychiatric institutions for most of his adult life, and yet there has not been one documented reference to Henry uh, until after his arrest. Henry did not abduct Sarah McKenzie. He didn't strip her naked or, or tie her to a bed in a cellar. He didn't rape her 12-year-old body or attempt to remove her ovaries with a box cutter. And he didn't videotape the two hours it took Sarah to bleed to death when that operation failed. Henry did not commit these atrocities because Henry does not exist. Joseph Kinkirk is fully aware of his actions. Just as he was when, when he committed them. Uh. It's after midnight, I'm afraid. I know, I need, I need two shots of tequila, a water back, and some volume on the TV. Please. Certainly. Sure. One minute past midnight, the state of Missouri began the execution of Joseph Kinkirk by lethal injection. With no reprieve coming from the governor's office, sodium theopentyl was first administered as an anesthetic. Can I get two, two more shots, please? Would, would you let me change a chart? No. Arrest and Mr. Kinkirk pronounced dead at 18 minutes past the hour. As you've just heard, Joseph Kinkirk has been put to death in a Missouri state. <laughs> we will have further reaction to this execution. <laughs> Can we go to Starbucks? Was last night. We watched Night of the Living Dead. Oh, no secrets. Put your uncle on the phone. Mommy wants to talk to you. So did you see them fry the bad guy last night? It was lethal injection. No. You get shit faced as usual? Watch your language in front of Sammy. Sorry. Did you, as usual, get shit faced? Hello. Hey. Hey. That's rude. Your mother hung up on me. Dad, can I call you back? I'm just at the airport. I need airport. your opinion on a patient. You're shouting again. Am I? Sorry. Look, I, I think you'll find this one to be very interesting. Just send me the file and I'll look it over. No, no, you have to meet him. I'll pick you up at the airport. Just give him one hour. You can't expect me to rearrange my life every time you dig up some medical oddity. Did you hang up? Dad? Where'd you find this, David? 
Bird, Bird, Bird. He was referred to me by Dr. Foster. Charlie? Mm -hmm. Well, that figures. David was picked up for vagrancy and then released into Charlie's care the next day. Well, how long has he been a patient here? A couple of days, since the weekend. That's all? Mm -hmm. Usually you like to train him for a month before you let me pick him apart. Ah, but this one has a whole new kind of act. Oh, yeah? Enjoy. Dr. Kara Jessup, and you must be David. David Bernberg, is that right? Yes. Bernberg, is that German? I don't know. Do you know why we're here? You want to ask me some questions? Is that all right with you? Yes. Okay. Have you been in a wheelchair your entire life? No. I had an accident a few years back. Are you left or right-handed? Right. And, um, in your childhood home, how many windows are there? Ten. Eleven if you count the star window and the door. But it didn't open. Okay. So when you're, when you're counting these windows, are you inside or outside the house? Inside. It's warmer. Mm-hmm. Were you raised in any religion? Ma'am, I was raised in the mountains. God held our hand and the devil waited for us to fall. I'd like to show you a series of abstract images, and I'd like you to just describe any thought that comes to mind, okay? Two small children. Mm -hmm. and, and they're playing that game. Um, pad cake, pad cake. Okay, okay, good. And this one? It looks like an elephant in the circus. Is it a big elephant? No. Baby elephant. Do you see any numbers in the circle? 16. Okay. How about this one? 73. Sure. Do you ever have any emotions you can't explain? No. Do you ever feel angry or violent or depressed for no apparent reason? No. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, Dad. I'm waiting. For what? Well, you didn't bring me here to meet David, did you? Mind if I make a call? No, I, I got nothing but time. Go right ahead.
Dr. Harding, is Adam there? I'm sorry, Dr. Harding. I'm the only one here. I'd like you to look for him. What was that? This is Adam. Adam, it's Dr. Harding. I wonder if you would have a moment to uh, speak with a colleague of mine? Sure. He didn't need to do that. Do what? Show off. Makes you look like a charlatan. Jessup. Jessup. You're Dr. Harding's daughter? Yes, I am. And you're Adam. Your husband was murdered, right? Whew. Yes. How? His throat was slit by a mugger. When? Three years ago. Where? When we were walking home from church on Christmas Eve. You think that was rude of me? Not at all. I'm used to it. Aggressive role manipulation is a common avoidance technique used by borderline personalities during therapy. But you knew that, didn't you? Not a girl. I have to watch out for your exploitive pathological tendencies. Ready to answer some questions? Shoot. In your childhood home, how many windows are there? One. One. Mm-hmm. Actually, two if you count the windshield. I see. Were you raised in any religion? Catholic. Mm -hmm. Okay, Adam, I have, a, I have a series of abstract images here. I'd like you to take a look at them and tell Dances, me. Dances, moth, elephants, the devil. I've seen all this stuff before, Doctor. Yes, you have. Okay, Adam. Do you see any numbers in the circles? Nope. And this one? No. Great. Great. What about this one? The number seven. your eyes are you wearing contact lenses no this is their natural color are you colorblind red deficient since birth I think we're done here. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Can I go now? You set me up. No, no. I offered you a chance to reconsider some of your assumptions. Adam is the host. David is the altar. Why didn't you let me interview Adam first? Oh, where's the fun in that? Get your stuff, okay? okay? I'll help you. Did you have fun? 
Ah, uh, she was pretty cranky till that second beer set in. You stand mm. for dinner? No. Sammy's got school in the morning. Mm-hmm. You okay? I mean, really okay? Yeah, I'll be okay. What are you working on? Uh, I'm just offlining an industrial. Oh, great. <laughs> you have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? No. No. Okay. Here we are. Did you say thank you to Uncle Steven, honey? Thank you, Uncle Steven. Sammy, next time you bring the beers, okay? All right. Okay. You know, I, I gotta tell you, I'm loving these underage drinking jokes. Thank you. I'm just loving them. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Bye. 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 Get off my property. <laughs> Don't pull all the way up into the driveway, okay? Because it'll be it'll be too tight for me to get out. Oh, you're there. No, it's a little. <sighs> This is perfect. Okay, honey, get in the bathtub, okay? And then we'll have dinner. Hey, What's that? Adam's file. Take a look. I'll think about it. I don't seem to have much time for God nowadays, Doc. He seems to work both ways. How's about you? Got your faith? My daughter lost her husband not too long ago. He's a good, good man. And he was murdered for no reason at all. Murdered? Mm -hmm. I find it kind of hard to believe in a God that would hurt my daughter. Dr. Hardy, is Adam there? I'm sorry, Dr. Harding. I'm the only one here. Little Cece. Hey, Charlie. You look terrible. Well, thank you. Course of antibiotics, I'll be fine. All right. So, to what do I owe the pleasure? Um, Adam Saber, I, I want to know how I came to you and why you dumped me, my father. Police found him laying in the street. He didn't appear intoxicated. Plans he wasn't able to walk. He gave his name as David Bernberg. By the time I examined him, he was up on his feet, calling himself Adam Saber. Said he had no idea how he got to the hospital. No, I thought of your father immediately. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Um, have you have you ever had a patient who was colorblind and just one eye? No. Why? I I was just thinking it might explain. Never mind. <laughs> How's Sammy? She's great. Soccer crazy. Hmm. There are tryouts at the school this Friday. You should come. I like that. Good. Um, can I can I get a copy of his hospital file? I'll fax it this afternoon. Thank you. Take care of yourself, all right? Yeah. I will. You take care of that kid. Yeah. Always. Um, is Ellie still working radiology? Uh, yeah, she's up on the third floor now. All right. Thanks again. Bye.
possible that when he wrenches his neck, he's compressing, decompressing a nerve and causing some kind of temporary paralysis? Look, this x-ray, the third, the fourth, the fifth vertebrae. Confused. Mm. So we're looking at x-rays here of uh, two different people. Two different. It's a hoax. The guy, the doctor. The doctor? Sure. How old do you know him? Well, some days, not at all. It's under your skin, doesn't he? These aren't his films. They can't be. Isn't it possible that that what you're looking at is actually what you're saying? No, because this is not possible. Adam is the real no, deal. He's a desperately ill young man, but he's fully aware of David and all of David's actions. David is pure invention, and I'll prove it to you. You know what? We haven't had dinner together in over a month. Well, you're coming to Easter, aren't you? Uh-huh. You want me to bring anything? Just your delightful self. <laughs> That's my girl. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> so David Bernberg, Shadywood High School, Shadywood, Shadywood. Sorry, doctor. Scared you a little right there, yeah, huh? a little bit, yeah. Listen, uh, I didn't want you to leave without having a chance to say thank you. For what? For trying to help. Thanks. You're welcome. down to the back. But you best be quick. I'm locking up in 10 minutes. No, I'll be quick. I promise. You almost done. Um, I'll be done in a minute. She doesn't mean it. Right? <laughs> Hello. Charlie? Oh, a little, a little 
Cece. You sound terrible. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, can I bring you anything? Uh, no, I've got soup. And, um, <clears throat> and the antibiotics about to kick in. I hate to ask, but, um, you never faxed me Adam Saber's file. Oh, I'm sorry. Is first thing all right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Just, just get some rest, okay? I will. <coughs> See you soon. Okay. Feel better. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Do you know the way to the quarry house? I don't know how I got to the hospital. Uh, I have no idea how I got to bed last night. You know, I just wake up in my room and I don't remember nothing. Well, the, the nurses helped you into your bed. Was I awake? In a manner of speaking.
They're ruined, aren't they? I, I'm sorry. I, I knocked at the front door. I, I was, I found them this morning. They must have been in water for weeks. All that music, all that life, all gone. Oh, I think, I think some of it can be saved, actually. Well, there's always hope. Uh, who are you? I'm looking for David Bernberg. David? Yeah, you're standing on him, aren't you? stumbles onto a story in the archives and tries to resurrect it as a cautionary tale. Are you talking about David's accent? No, my dear. His murder. How did this accident happen? He fell. Where it leaves on stone steps. And just like that, his life had to begin again. But he accepted his fate with such nobility. With four years, David showed the world how brightly the Holy Spirit shone within him. But then, David lost his way. He found a doctor in the city who was experimenting with spinal replacement or some such nonsense. David came to believe that this practitioner would one day give him back his legs. It seemed as if every month he'd ride into the city on the bus with hope in his eyes. Injected and sliced open and returned broken hearted. Then one month he left home. He never returned. It was one week later when they found his remains. He had been taken into the woods and abused. Torture. Been sitting there watching, unable to fight back, watching as they did those unspeakable things. I, I, I cannot. I, I pray you never will. David turned his back on God and looked to science for his answers. The Lord told us quite plainly. Weigh not thy faith in me. difference between a dissociated personality and a delusional one no hello because i have something yeah okay so the real david bernberg was born on february 5th 1963. he slipped and broke his back in november of 1979. in april of 1982 he was murdered now, while, while every local TV station and newspaper was recounting the, the details of, of his horrific death, your, your Adam Saber was six years old. 
His mother had just died, and he'd been placed in the first of several foster homes. His escape was this, this macabre murder. Now, now every, everything that Adam knew of David, he would have gleaned from the media, right? Okay, well, say that I agree with these somewhat shaky assumptions. Why would Adam create a delusion? Give me your wallet. Any wallet will do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So why do you carry this picture of mom? To remind me of her. Mm -hmm. And experience the positive effects that these memories evoke. Yeah. Yes. Now, if this picture existed, but you had no awareness of it, would you still be able to benefit from its existence? I suppose not, no. Oh, okay. So I believe, as a child, Adam Saber began carrying around a mental picture of David so that no matter where he went, no matter how horrific things became, there was always someone who had it worse. David Bernberg, who was tortured to death by Satan worshipping mountain witches. But to benefit from this mental image, he must be fully aware of it and therefore cannot be disassociated. That is a very compelling diagnosis. Thank you very much. How are you going to prove it? Oh, oh, Dad, I'm not going to prove it. I'm going to cure it. Hello, Mrs. Bernberg. Thank you again for agreeing to help me with this. I wanted to tell you that um, Adam has created an impersonation of your son. I, um, I, I don't want you to be alarmed. I've raised three boys and said prayers upon their graves. Not much alarms me. Thank you. I, I do appreciate it. Here's with Adam now. Hello, Adam. Hey. This is Dita Bernberg. Is the name familiar to you at all? Nope. Uh, her son, David, was murdered 25 years ago. She had. I'm sorry. You may have heard of it. There's no papers. 25 years ago? I was like six years old. I didn't read the papers much. Mm -hmm. Yo, this is Adam. I'd like to speak with David, please. Uh, there's no David here. My son is dead. No, Mama. I'm not dead. You are not my son. Yes, I am. We live at the quarry house on Tall Road. I was able to find your address in the phone book. My bedroom used to be a library. You used to fold the clothes on the shelves like books. Stop it. Yeah. You used to say, what clothes should we read today, David? No. My bed. My bed was made from harvest wood to keep me safe from the spirits. My son died 25 years ago. You have a nail in your pocket.
How could you know that? <laughs> no one knows that. Only... We found it in Asker and Mine. <laughs> you always carry it, Mama. Poor Avivil. Yes. And it's not working. <gasps> Yeah, this is it. You can get him out of the van. Do you want me to come with you? No, we'll be fine. Be sure? Yeah. All right. I'll be fine. no reason that you should recognize this place. What is it? What's the matter? I was here at night. What? That's why I didn't recognize this place. Things are different. Right there, there was a shine. I'm 
sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, all right, I'm gonna take you back to the van, okay? I'm taking, I'm gonna take you back. It's all right. All right. I'm sorry. The chair is stuck. I have to go get it. No, no, please, please don't leave me. Uh, all right, all right, all right, okay. Just get a signal. I mean, just, I'm just gonna walk away and get a signal, okay? You're all right. You're all right. <laughs> Hi, Virgil. No, no, no. I'm, I'm all right. I just, the, the chair is stuck, and I need you to push it out. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Who's Adam? My name is Dr. Carolyn Jessup. Yeah, we'll get to you later. Adam. I asked who Adam was. Adam is a patient of mine. You all right? You feel confused? Confused? You don't tell me when to be confused, lady. You're not the one who keeps waking up in strange goddamn places with no idea how you got there. So I asked you a question. Where am I? And why would you think I was Adam? You're at Walker's Mill. And you look like Adam. Hey! Caroline! Are you all right? Yeah, we're fine. I was, um, I'm just... I'm talking to, uh... Wes. Wes. Morning, Virgil. Hey, Wesley. talk to you. Okay, I'll be, I'll be right, I'll be right back. Why are you... I just met Wes. What? Why, Dad? Why? Why do you do this to me? Because you've stopped asking questions. That's all I do. That's all I do all day long. That's all I do, Dad. No, no. You've stopped asking questions of yourself, Caroline. You've developed this, this fixed system of beliefs which you refuse to submit to any kind of introspection. So what that means is that you will never have a new thought in your professional life. You have got to learn to take those ideas, set them to one side, and try to move ahead with one big question, which is, why? And simply ask, what? To just say, I don't know. Just because you're older doesn't mean you're right. It might mean that you've been wrong for longer. What has been your motivation here? Has it been to help Adam to discover whatever crisis it is that caused him to fracture his psyche, or has it been to simply flat out prove me wrong? Hmm? Oh, hon. Oh, come on, don't. All right, everybody go take a shower now. Honey? Wesley Kreit was a front man for an underground rock band. He died November 1994. It was a possible suicide. At this exact point, Adam Saber is in prison. He's just been placed in solitary confinement. So at this, this low, low moment in his life, he assumes yet another person who has a story worse than his own. OK. Okay. 
Good. If that's all right with you. I would first like to ask you a question. Yes? Do you hold that doctorate in the name of science or God? Why do you ask? That thing around your neck. Mm. I'd, I'd like to consider myself a doctor of science, but a woman of God. There's something I'd like to show you. It's dated, so. Was it ever published? No. David made it up in the hospital after his accident. And he'd sing it to himself. Never became sad or scared. When he was scared? It seemed to be a sanctuary for him. Shelter in the storm. Is it possible that, um... The night he was murdered, when he was in the woods, is it, is it possible that he sang this lullaby? I pray he did. Hello? Hey, Dad. I, I think that when Adam Saber was a little boy, he may have witnessed David Bernberg's murder. And, and David is an escape from that memory. Maybe Wes is too. Um, do, you, do you have a home address for Adam? Why? Because I want to know what kind of life Adam is trying to escape from. Hey. Hey there, buddy. Good boy. Good boy.
know. Hello? Is anybody here? dead body? No. We sent someone to pick up this Adam Saber for questioning. Shit, shit. Um, I, I, I forgot to pick up my daughter. I can't stay. You don't have to be I, here. Thanks. I got you. Thank you. Detective Dan, it's Caroline Jessup. Hello. Adam Saber is at my daughter's elementary school. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's Brockhurst Elementary at the soccer fields. Hi. As soon as you can. Thanks. Sammy! Sammy! You see? Samantha! I told you she'd be here. No need to worry. I need you to come over here right now. But, Ma! Right now! Get over here! Come on. We should go away from this mom, okay? Is everything all right? How'd you get here? I'm not entirely sure. Sammy was wonderful. I think she's gonna make you... I want you to stay away from my family! But you invited me. I didn't know such thing. At the hospital? What hospital? When you came to see me. Cece, are you all right? What did you call me? Little Cece! Who are you? Oh, for heaven's sake. Caroline, it's me. Charles. about not 
stop talking to strangers. But he knew my name, and he just wanted to talk to me till you got there. What did he want to talk about? First, he wanted to know family stuff. Yeah? Like what we did this summer and my birthday. What about your birthday? If I like the books he sent me. What else? Then he wanted to know about God and stuff. What did you tell him? That I didn't believe. Why did you say that, honey? Because if God was real, he wouldn't have let Daddy die. I think that God knew how wonderful Daddy was. And he wanted him in heaven to make it a better place. It's all right that I don't believe, Mommy. Why? Grandpa doesn't believe anymore. So whatever happens, I'll be with him. you. And he always will, okay? Okay. What'd you do to your back? Don't know. Kind of itches. Mm. Put something on it, okay? Hey, Dad. It's me. Look, I, I think there's a connection between Adam and his altars. They all seem to want to know if you have faith. Adam asked you. Wes asked me. Charles asked Sammy. Charles? It, well, Adam came to Sammy's school pretending to be Charles. Carol, she's, she's... Charles is dead. What? I... Dad, I just talked to him. He was sick, but he didn't... I mean... Dad, I'm so sorry. Me too. You always had to do everything first. <laughs> I love you, sweetheart. I love you too, Daddy. Bye-bye. I'm seeing this, right? The shadow's moving. It looks like there's somebody else there, right? Yeah, but... But, you know, but, but what? Carrie, this is... Come on, this is Dad. He's doing what he always does. He's messing with you. Can you just find out what it is? Yeah, sure. So, uh... What's the deal? The deal, Mr. Saber, is a body found in your house. Excuse me? Male, approximately 30 to 50 years of age. You know him? Okay. Are you a religious man, Mr. Safer? I only ask as this cross was etched into the victim's back. 
Do you recognize this? Maybe it was burnt or carved in. We're not sure yet. Does this mean anything to you? No. Adam, do you recognize any of these? Do you recognize them? Does this cross mean anything to you? Do you recognize any of these? I said I don't recognize them! Are you dead? Okay, excuse okay. me. Excuse me, detective. Can I speak to you for a second? like this in town. I I'm sorry, I, I didn't know who else to ask. Dr. Jessup, why are you here? Your textbooks have failed you, isn't that right? Yes. So listen, that's why God gave us two ears but one mouth. There's the devil's magic in these hills. That some may try to tend an ailing child or take revenge for a terrible wrongdoing. Remember this. Your books may have failed you, but your God has not. Follow on where the road ends, to the very top of the valley. You'll see a hollow there. Ask for the granny. I'm looking for the granny. It's important that I find her. I need to find out what this is. I, I think it's some kind of a cross. Do you know what it is? Do you, do you know? Let me see. It's no cross. How are you doing that? With better eyes than yours. Can you tell me what it means? You won't believe. Child.
soda? Mm -mm. Sure? No freaking thing. Ow. What are you oh, doing? Sorry, pal. I need to try something. Uncle Steven, what are you doing? I check something. He'll be fine. Now, will you believe? It's the writing of the mountains. This is shelter. You have two new messages. Dr. Jessup, this is Detective Danton. Just want to let you know there wasn't enough to hold Adam Saber, but we released him into your father's care. Any luck with that cross? Call me. Next message. Jesus, Carrie, where the hell are you? Okay, the darkness on the video, the thing that moves, it's a sound wave. It's a voice. Carrie, it's a freaking voice. Listen. For every Christian. Shelter the faithless. Hear that? Kara. What was that? 
Uh, I, I have no idea, but I, I do know who Christian Moore is, or was. He was born in Burlington, Alabama in 1889. He's one of those good old boy Southern faith healers. He died in 1918. That That's all the info I got. However, listen to this, okay. There's some sort of historical society in Milling Junction. Now there's a guy there by the name of Monty. He has all this information on him. Okay, I'm, I'm about 50 miles from Milling Junction now. Well, you can be there an hour, go. Let me see what I got. No cough medicines. Mom says it's not good for you. Seriously? Honey works though. Yeah? Okay. Uncle Steven? Yeah? I think there's something on my back. My late father made these films right after the Great War. <laughs> Nineteen hundred and eighteen. That's when it came. The influenza epidemic. And that's when we met him. The Reverend Christian Moore. He's a self proclaimed faith healer. And he told the hollow folks that they didn't need their voodoo medicine, just faith in the Lord. And he had a good number of hollow folk turn their backs on the granny. You see, he used as an example his own two children. Well, they were full of health and apparently immune to the ravages of the disease. And uh, they were strange children, as I remember, quiet. Turns out that their silence was for a good reason. The reverend had lost his faith, and he had had his own kin inoculated against the disease, leaving the others to die. And that's why the hollow folk did what they did. What was that? Well, my father was filming as usual, and I accompanied him. And that's when I found them, the Reverend's children. They dragged the reverend to the granny. And she handed down her own form of mountain justice for his faithless ways. And I can't really tell you what happened. child of eight it sure as hell looked like that old hag had sucked out Christian Moore's soul and stuffed his gullet with dirt so that it couldn't get back in and then she said something that I 
I'll never forget. Dr. Jessup, it's Detective Danton. Can you hear me? Yeah. What, what's, what's the matter? All right, I just want to let you know we've dispatched a squad car to your father's location. They're going to be there in a few minutes, and I'm on my way right now. Why? Why? What's happened? There's been a mistake. <coughs> Hello. Dad? Oh, hey, sweetie. Dad, is Adam with you now? Yes, the police dropped him off. A while ago. Can he hear what I'm saying? I shouldn't think so. He's in his room. Okay, um, Dad, I, I need you to leave. Why? What's going on? You're in danger. What are you talking about? Dad, Adam Saber is dead. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yes, but you're not making any sense. The body that I found, that was Adam. Whoever's with you now is not Adam Saber. Well, then who is he? I don't, I don't know. We... Nathan Institute. Virgil, I need you to run upstairs and check on my dad, okay? Okay, I'll, I'll check on him. Put you on hold. Where's my dad? Something terrible has happened, Karen. He's gone. He's dead. So I'm what? Sorry. There was nothing I could do. He's gone. What? What? Sweetie, it's mommy. Can you can you can can you put your uncle on? 
Mom wants to talk to you. He's getting his car keys. Why? Where, where are you going? <coughs> Sammy, are you all right? Hey, Sammy's coughing up a storm. He's <coughs> some rash. Her <coughs> pediatrician's closed. They said I should start heading to general. Doctor can't help. Are you out of your mind, Carrie? She needs to see a doctor. Think about what you heard on that video. This man is so dangerous. Please, you have to bring her up here. No, you have to listen to yourself. I'm not taking my niece to a goddamn <laughs> witch doctor. I'm taking her to a hospital. Please listen to me and, and bring her here. No. Where are we going? To the hospital. You know. Steve-o! Wait. Stay the hell away from this. Steve-O! You have no on, idea on, what's on. going on here, Stevie! Samantha Jane! Come with me! Uh, Samantha Jane! Go, 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 go! Up the stairs! Come on! In the bathroom, in the bathroom, in the bathroom. Go, go, go! You're in great danger, buckaroo! Hey, your freak show just showed up in Dad's car. Keep, keep him away from her, okay? Steven, for once in your life, will you listen to your father? Here. Hi, Mommy. Hey, baby. Hey, do whatever your Uncle Steven says, okay? Okay. Now, everything's, everything's gonna be okay, and, and I'm gonna stay on the phone with you the whole time, all right? I'm scared, Mommy. I know, I know. The man from the soccer field, he's here. I know, honey, I know. Stephen? Samantha Jane? Stephen, this is your father. This is no time to be playing games, Stephen. <coughs> Sammy? Samantha Jane, honey. You gotta come with your grandpa, Samantha Jane. Honey? Please! Damn it, Stevie, open the door! We don't have much time. There's a very bad man coming, Stevie. Open the door. I can't help you yeah. if you don't open the door to your father. I don't care, man. Get out of this house now. Stevie! Stevie! Samantha Jane? It's Sammy! Sammy! Steven! That was an accident, honey. Listen to me. You gotta come with me. Samantha Jane. Sammy, tell him to put David on the phone. She wants to speak to David. David? But David's not here, sweetie. Sammy, put me, put me on speakerphone. Caroline? Steven, Steven! Mommy. He fell. Sammy? Can you come here and get me? Before he wakes up. Uncle Steven? Are you okay? <sighs> Tell me where the switch doctor is. Yeah. I'm scared. Come on, don't be scared. Uh, oh, come on. Come on! Like I want to throw up, Uncle Steven. 
see your mom real soon, okay? <laughs> I promise. Just a, it's just a couple more miles. I know, I know, I know. Just, just go, just go straight. We'll, we'll, we'll be there soon. Jesus, I hope you know what you're doing. Just keep going straight. Watch out! Shit! Lost your way, did you, child? From God. My dad died. Terrible thing to lose a loved one. Worse thing to lose your faith. Sorry, child. Why? Once the sheltering has begun, he will find you. No, 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 you, you have to do something. She's made a choice. She, she didn't make a choice. She, she didn't make a choice. She's a child. We are all God's children. Please, please, please help us. Help, help her. Help, help her. She will not be alone. She will rest with the sheltered one. No, no, no.
Leave, mommy. I hit my head. It's okay. It's okay. I'm really scared, mommy. It's okay. It's okay. Shh. Round my bed, one to the foot, and one to the head, one to sing, and one to pray. And one to take my sins away. Mom. Okay. Mommy! <laughs> 